Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas, this is how to create a Grand Theft Auto style game in Unity, and welcome to episode 48. In this tutorial we are going to make our main menu a little bit more interactive and a bit more visually pleasing with some effects. Don't forget, click subscribe button and click on the bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial still to come in this series and everything else on game development on my channel. With that in mind, let's get to work. So firstly I want to bring in some background music. Uh, it's quite loud so we might have to play around with the settings a little bit. And if you do want it, you can get it on my website if you head over there, downloads and assets, GTA, tutorial number 48, and you can download it there. So firstly, let's go to our audio folder, right click, create, folder, and let's just call this BGM, short for background music. And in there, I'm going to import one of these items. And there we go. And I'm actually going to attach it to menu controls rather than create a new object, just because there's no point right now. Uh, we want to make sure it loops, we want it to play on awake, and let's have the volume as 0 0.1, like I say, it may be quite loud. And press play to see if it sounds okay. Yeah, it's, it's just a quick and simple thing I've thrown together in FL Studio. Um, you don't have to use this one, you can use anything you want, literally any sound you want. So. Next thing I want to do is I want to change how these buttons look because they are somewhat invisible. I mean, we can barely see that says quit. So we need to have it so as they are white when we're not on them, but then turn that greyish color when we are on them. And we're going to use an event trigger to do so. Now, the coolest and quickest way of doing this is going to the buttons, go into text, hold control, press D, and let's just change that color to white. Same again with load game. Nice, quick and simple. I mean, there are obviously different ways of doing some of these things, and people do things differently. You know, there's always cool ways of doing things, but the way I'm doing this, as they may not be the best, but I'm doing it this way because I want to show you something new, something cool that you could use, not necessarily for this purpose, but some other purpose somewhere down the line. So what we're going to do is we're going to use an event trigger when we hover over the actual uh, button itself, and then we can play around with it. So let's go to our scripts folder and let's go to UI. This is all UI based, so we'll do it in here. So right click, create and C sharp script. And we'll call this button um, color. And let's open that up in Visual Studio. So we do not need void start or void update. They can go. Uh, we do need to declare a variable though. So public game object, and we'll call this one something relative. So this is going to be the lighter text. So we'll say light text. And the way we're going to do it is we're going to create two separate methods. Both of them are going to be public because they're going to be used on the button. And one of them will basically turn on and one will turn off. So we'll be able to see as we move the mouse over each button, it come on and go off. So the first thing we do is say public void, and we can call this something relative. So this is going to be when our mouse enters the actual button, and we'll call this turn off and open close bracket, open curly bracket. And I am going to put an annotation here, and I'm going to put a quick note to say mouse enters button area and what the code will do is it will say light text dot set active false semicolon and then we have to do the inverse of that so public void turn on open close bracket open curly bracket and i'll put another annotation to say mouse leaves button area and it's going to be the same line of code except we change it from false to true and save so let's head back into unity and by default we do want all of those lighter versions of the text on and let's select each of those buttons and then let's go down to add component and then type in there the name of the script that we've just written. So in this case, button color. 
right there. And it will add that to each and every script. Next thing we need to do is we need to go on to new game, for example, and just drag and drop the text over into there. Same with load game and options. So yeah, that's basically all you're doing for now. Just make sure you're setting each button correctly, like so. Next thing we need to do is set up that event trigger. So to do that, make sure we're on new game to start with. Let's go to add component, clear that search and type event. You'll see event system and event trigger. So make sure you click on event trigger. You'll see this box of here down here and you'll see add new event type. Let's add a new event type. And then we want the pointer to enter. So when the pointer enters, what we need to do is we need to click plus and then we need to drag and drop new game here. No function will light up just like it does when we normally do this up here. Remember when we set it as the click so it does things? Well, this time we do the same sort of thing and we go down to button color and we want to turn off. So same thing, we need to go to add new event type, pointer exit, change this to turn on. And I'm gonna save the scene and press play. And we should see new game change. Cool. Nice and simple. It really is as simple as that. So you just need to do the same kind of thing with uh, all the other buttons. Uh, I mean, logically you can select the other buttons and then you can add component and then event trigger. Uh, but obviously once you get to that point, you're not able to do separate things because um, you've got different objects selected. You can't do it multiple, but if you just go one by one, you know, go down new event type, pointer enter. Uh, it's, it's quick and simple really. There's uh, not much to it like that. So just make sure you get those in the right order and make sure you do have two event types. That's where things can become uh, a little bit frustrating if you've accidentally added this section to the first event type. So that is the one thing I would say here. Just be very mindful of what you're doing here and just be, well, I say concentrating. I'm not really concentrating as I'm doing this. I'm just going ahead with it and uh, it's all well, it is working. So I've done three there. Let's quickly check how that looks. Yeah, cool. So these two I've not done. I'll probably do them off camera. There's no point in me wasting any more time with this. So next thing I want to do is I want to create a little fade screen and a little sound when we click um, new game, for example. So how do we do that? Well, firstly, let's bring in another sound file. So let's go to effects. And let's bring in the other sound that we had, which is button select. Now what we'll do is we will create a sub item on the menu controls. So right click, create empty, and let's call this same thing, button select. And next thing I want to do is I want to create a fading out screen because we're gonna link all this together. So as when we click the object or button, I should say, then we fade out and go to our game. But there's another couple of things that we have to do as well to make sure that sequence falls into place correctly. And what I mean by that is we need to be able to not press any more buttons. So to do that, we'll take this button column as well, hold control, press D, and I am going to turn the color to completely see-through. And we're gonna call this button blocker and I'm gonna turn it off up here. Right, now let's add that sound file for the button select. Uh, I'm gonna have play on awake uh, and press play just so we can see what it sounds like. That's very loud, so let's turn that down just a touch. Uh, 0.4 maybe. And let's turn off play on awake. So next thing, let's set up that fade out screen. Now we have done this before. We know it's real easy. So let's zoom through this. So game object, um, UI, and let's go to raw image. Let's stretch the image across the scene and zero, 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 zero. And let's set the color to black and alpha to see through. And let's change it to fade out. And I want this to fade out over 
three seconds. So this one's going to be a little bit different than what we did before. Uh, so let's go to animations. Let's go to UI and let's go fade out. Animation, create, main, menu, fade. And then let's hit the record button, set the first keyframe. So that means the alpha is going to be zero. And after three seconds, which is 180 frames, we want the alpha to be completely opaque. And let's stop that recording, head back to project, click on the animation and turn off loop time because we only want it to play the once. Finally, let's turn off that fade out. So we have everything that we need for the sequence. Let's write that sequence. So that means heading to our menu controls and main menu control. And in here, we need to add in those two extra variables, sorry, three extra variables. The first one, public audio source button select. Second, public game object, and that's gonna be fade out. And finally, public game object button blocker. Like I say, that button blocker is key because it will stop us being able to press other buttons. There's always different ways of doing things in Unity, but I like using weird, cool, unique ways of doing things. And this is just so simple to put another UI element on top of those buttons so they cannot be clicked. So what do we do here? Well, we're at the point where we're pressing, for example, new game. So rather than go straight into new game, we need to create a coroutine. So let's go below new game and let's say I enumerator and we'll call it new start oh close bracket open curly bracket and first thing we'll do is we will play the button select so button select dot play open close bracket semicolon next we'll start the fade out sequence so fade out dot set active true um, in fact, before we do anything though, maybe we should put that button blocker in first. So button blocker dot set active true. And finally, we need to put in a wait for, and then we need to load our scene. So yield return new wait for seconds. And it's three seconds long, so let's put three. And then we can place this line of code, the scene manager line, cut it, place it here. And the very last thing to do here would be to start the coroutine. So start coroutine, and we called it new start, oh, close bracket, close bracket semicolon, and save. So the only thing we need to do now is make sure we update our variables back in Unity. So let's head there and on the main menu control, we should see some extra variables. So if I don't change my hierarchy size, uh, button select is going to be there, fade out and button blocker and save the scene. Let's press play and let's see if the new game works as intended. Cool. Now, obviously you can customize that as much as you need to. You don't necessarily have to uh, have it the same as me. Uh, one thing I have noticed though, I'm not entirely convinced that all this is in the right place for me. Um, I'm thinking I might change that to there and move this along. So you'll notice when you play around with the canvas, things can move around just a little bit. That is a good indication that you need to maybe change around some of the anchoring like I've had to right there. So uh, how do we make it? So as load game also does the same. Well, the great thing is that we can use a very, very similar coroutine. Now we could theoretically use the same coroutine, but I'm going to write a new one, but don't worry. We will consolidate all of these coroutines at some point to make the script shorter and more efficient. I just want to show you how it would be done for now.
So let's copy that coroutine, new start, and let's place it underneath the load game and let's call it load start. And in this case, it's gonna load scene two, if you know it is one. So instead of that there, we will say start coroutine and in brackets, load start, upper close bracket, close bracket and semicolon. Everything here stays the same because it's the same um, variables that we're using no matter what. So let's save that, head back into Unity. And because we've already attached all that to the button, we don't need to worry about it at all. It will function as intended. So let's check that out. Let's press play. And let's click on load game. Cool. And there we are, we've loaded our game with that extra interactive sequence. Now, there's obviously loads of different things that you can do with this, more effects that you can add. So if you build upon what we've done in this tutorial and add more, make it cooler, better, you know, that'll be something really, really cool for you to do. So next tutorial, um, I wanna do a couple more things, you know, just random things before we get back into main development. Um, basically because I think we're at a point now where we have all these things set up and we need to start building the core game mechanics. So that's going to be coming up very soon. Um, things like, you know, um, AI cars and stuff like that. So uh, a lot of people love trophies and collecting things. That is obviously quite a big thing. So I want to go through um, some cool ideas and menus and stuff for trophies. So we'll be focusing on that in the next tutorial. Until then, thanks very much for watching, guys.